Here's a roller bearing. This is the outer ring, the inner ring, and the hole is called the bore, and you can see the bearings in there. So here's an example of a roller bearing. Here we have a shaft supported by a journal bearing. I'll take this out so you can see it better. And lay this flat. So this is called the bearing housing. We have the oil inlet. We have the bore, which is the hole. And this black piece actually rotates and that's called the bearing liner. The shaft rests in this bore and the portion of the shaft that rests there is called the journal. So here we have a system where we have a shaft supported by the journal bearing. So let's draw the free body diagram of the shaft. And we won't draw the journal bearing because the shaft has been freed from it. But just to illustrate, I will draw the journal bearing as a dotted line. The x-axis is in this direction, the y-axis is along here, and the z-axis right there. The journal actually prevents the shaft from translating in the x and the z direction, so we're going to have reaction forces in those directions. The journal bearing does not prevent translation in the Y, meaning the shaft is free to translate in that direction. So there will be no reaction force in the Y direction. So I'm going to illustrate or emphasize this by drawing the vector Fy and setting it equal to zero. So let's look at the reaction moments at this point. If we were to push down on this shaft, it would cause this journal bearing to have a tendency to rotate about the x-axis. Therefore, we indicate this by drawing a reaction moment about the x-axis. If I were to push the shaft in this direction, it would cause the journal bearing to rotate about the z-axis. So we would have this reaction moment like that. This shaft is free to rotate about the y-axis. Therefore, this journal bearing does not resist that motion. So there won't be any reaction moment about the y-axis. I'll just draw the reaction moment about the y-axis, but I'm going to set it equal to zero to emphasize that there is no reaction moment about that axis. So on this journal bearing, there's this set screw here that I can put into this tapped hole to secure the shaft in place. So what that does is it prevents motion of the shaft in the Y direction. This particular setup is now called a single thrust bearing. And let's draw the free body diagram for that. So we have our shaft and we will 
indicate the axes as such. Where this is our X, C, and this is our Y. So just like before, the journal bearing prevents the shaft from translating in the X and the Z, and now it prevents the shaft from translating axially in the Y direction. So we will have reaction forces in the X, the Y, and Z. In terms of reaction moments, the journal bearing prevents the shaft from rotating about the z-axis, rotating about the x-axis, meaning that way, and there is no resistance to rotation about the y-axis. So we have our reaction moment in the Z axis, about the X axis, and again, no reaction moment about the Y axis. Suppose I add a second journal bearing on this end. And there's also a set screw here that I can tighten such that the shaft is fixed. Let's draw the free body diagram for this particular situation. So here's my shaft. I won't draw the journal bearings because I've freed the shaft from them. And the axes that I will use is the same as before. I'll say that's my y-axis, x-axis, z-axis. What I'd like to do is draw the reactions of this journal bearing at this point and also at that point for this journal bearing. Again, the journal bearings prevent the shaft from translating in the X direction, in the Z direction, and now in the Y direction. So I'll have reaction force in each of those directions. So we now have this reaction force in the Y as well as the reaction force in the Z. These journal bearings don't prevent this shaft from rotating about the y-axis. Therefore, the moment about the y-axis is equal to zero. When we have a shaft that's supported by two journal bearings, we won't have a reaction moment about the z-axis. That'll equal to zero. And also, there won't be any moment about the x-axis. That will equal to zero. Let's determine the reactions at this point. So this journal bearing prevents this shaft from translating in the x-direction and also in the z-direction. So we would have reactions in each of those directions. And let's label this as point B. So we'll write the subscripts B and let's label this as point A and we can also write subscripts such as that, as well as for the moments.
So we'll write it as point A. This is for point A. That's also for point A. In terms of reaction moments, these two journal bearings work in tandem to prevent this shaft from having any tendency to rotate in the Z direction, in the X direction, also due to the fact that the shaft is able to freely rotate, there is no reaction moment about the Y axis. Moment about the X axis at point B is equal to zero. Moment about the Y axis at point B is also equal to zero. And also, moment about the Z axis is also equal to zero. So consider another type of journal bearing, and we call this a single journal bearing with a square shaft. So it looks something like this. And there's a square shaft such that a rectangular cross-section tube can be inserted. So this particular journal bearing allows this rectangular tube to translate axially, but it prevents rotation about each of the axes. So let's draw the free body diagram of that square tube. And we'll call this point A. So I'll say that's point A right there. We'll define the axes like that. So translation in the X and Z is prevented. So there will be reaction forces in those directions. There'll be no reaction force in the Y because the shaft is free to translate in that direction. So I'm just going to draw that and just say it's equal to zero. In terms of reaction moments, due to the geometry of that square, the single journal bearing prevents rotation about the x-axis, the z-axis, and also the y-axis. So we'll have reaction moment in each of those directions. So moment about the x-axis, moment about the y-axis, and moment about the z-axis.